In this video, I'm going to be talking about 10 tools that you should start using in 2023. I'll start with my tried and true stack, the five tools I've been using for years now. Then I'll go into the five tools that I've discovered more recently that have been a huge value add for my workflow. And honestly, I haven't heard people talking about these five, so you're definitely going to want to stick around for the second half of the video. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. I'm Maddie. If you're new, I'm a freelance designer and content creator, and I also teach through online classes. So if you want to dive deeper and you like my style of videos, I'm going to leave a link in the description for you to check out the classes I have. Okay, so two tools I'm not going to go into here are Adobe and Figma, and that's because if you're a designer, you already know about these tools, and if you watched any of my videos in the past, you know that I use them. So we'll start with my other absolute favorite, and that is To Do. Just like it sounds, it is a to-do list app, but it's super, super simple. I have been using To Do for, I think, over four years now, and I use it every single day. I use it for my work, in my personal life, and it's just a really good way for list people to kind of get their fix. You have daily lists and tasks kind of roll into the next day if you don't finish them. You can also create little headers and sections within the list if you want to, but they don't have any flashy features, which I really like. So I spend more time actually doing what I need to do and less time planning it and organizing it on my to-do list. Next is Miro, and if you watched my recent plan with me video, which I will leave linked in the cards, then you know that this is where I actually create my calendar. And this is how I prioritize my work and plan out when I'm going to do what. I'll kind of write down all of the tasks I need to get done, the bigger projects. I'll chunk them down into more bite-sized pieces that I can do in a day or half a day or a couple hours. And then I'll schedule out when I'm going to be doing those things. Then at the beginning of the week or the end of the previous week, I'll look at that calendar that I've created in Miro just with a bunch of sticky notes and I will transfer those to do's into to do. Miro is also kind of like Fig Jam or um, Mural. It is a really good way to just get ideas out there, organize them. It's basically just a virtual whiteboard. Number three is Notion, and I also have a video on how I use Notion. It's a little bit old, but my process has not changed much. Um, you probably have heard of Notion, but the main things that I use it for are planning my content for YouTube. And as a freelance designer, this is where some of my clients will create scope documents that I use to design from. I also keep track of my finances in Notion, which is super, super helpful. And I just have little Notion notes and spaces where I keep track of like books I want to read and things like that. Number four is Loom and you've probably heard me talk about Loom in the past. It's basically asynchronous video for teams but I use it for a lot of other things too. As a freelance designer I do use it to record my face or voice in my screen talking through design solutions and why I made certain design decisions and send those over to the client so that we can kind of have asynchronous communication about projects but I also use it all the time as a content creator so anytime you see me recording my screen I'm using loom it's just so so nice and I actually have the paid version so I can record my screen in 4k which I love it's definitely a nice to have number five is found and found is actually a bank that I use as a freelancer so I'll show you on the screen here what it looks like I just like it and I switched to it from Chase Bank um, for my business account because I think it's just so much more intuitive, easy to use, and easy on the eyes <laughs> as a UX designer. I hate traditional banking apps like the PNC app and the Chase app. They're just they're bad. They're, it's just simply poor design. And so when a friend of mine shared that she was using Found, I checked it out and I really, really like it, especially because it's free and you don't have to have like a minimum balance in your bank account, which was not the case for Chase. I found myself always incurring fees because I would like dip just below the $1,500 minimum, which is super annoying. So yeah, I really like found if you happen to be looking for a new 
business bank account. You can also do invoicing, which I love, and it keeps track of what taxes you might owe, especially if you are a freelancer. This is really important if you're paying estimated taxes each quarter, and it helps you automatically put money aside into a taxes account so you don't accidentally spend it. Number six is Jifsky, and I also have a video on that, which I will leave linked in the cards. It's basically just a way to turn an MP4 into a really high quality but low file size GIF. That's pretty much it. It is just the best way by far that I have found to do this and I've tried a lot of other things. Um, I have three videos on this topic and Jifsky is my most recent and definitely the method that I would recommend. So check that out. It's free in the app store. Number seven is Typeface and this is a really cool tool that I discovered recently. It's basically an alternative to Fontbook which comes on your Mac. Um, and it's so much better because it lets you kind of organize fonts into libraries. So I have one for my brand fonts. It lets you type in sample text and then kind of scroll through all the fonts you have either organized or just in one big list. So it really, really helps with choosing fonts for design projects. The other thing I love is that you can actually see all the little symbols, glyphs, and ligatures that come with your fonts. And you can't do that in font book. So a lot of these fonts I didn't even realize came with these cool little symbols that could be so fun to use for projects and branding and things like that. So I'm so excited that I discovered this and I actually found it through my subscription with Setup. Setup is basically a one-stop app subscription for Mac and iPhone users. It has over 230 apps and you can get access to all of those through Setup for just $9.99 a month instead of having to pay for them separately. So it's really cool. Highly recommend that you would check it out. I'll leave it linked below. And Setup is also how I discovered the rest of the apps on this list, which brings me to number eight, Mockup Studio. And as you can see here, they have tons and tons of mockups and they're all free with your subscription. So that's super nice. Mockups are something that I find really hard to find high quality ones, especially for free. So I usually end up paying for them from Creative Market, which is still a great solution. But if I'm going to have access to Mockup Studio through Setup, then this is even more economical for me. Number nine is CleanShot X, and this is the answer to a question I get asked all the time, which is how do I get long scrolling screenshots of websites? Um, I did this a lot for my Webflow series where I had a screenshot of the website off to the side so that I could design the new and improved site. And this just comes in handy a lot, honestly. So basically all you have to do is set the parameter for it to take a screenshot, you scroll, and then it turns it into an image file, which is just super convenient and nice to have. And lastly, number 10 is speed cut. And I love this because it kind of replaced Photoshop for me a little bit. I still use Photoshop every once in a while, but the main thing I used to use Photoshop for was cutting images out from the background. And so CleanShot X is something that does it automatically for you. You just drag a screenshot into the tool and it spits back out a PNG with a transparent background. Sometimes, honestly, it takes a couple tries. You have to try either portrait or object mode. Um, but I have gotten some pretty great results from this and obviously it saves so much time. So highly recommend checking that out. If you want to check out any of the tools on this list, I highly recommend trying out Setup to save some money and discover some new tools for your workflow. I'll leave a link in the description box below for you to get a free trial. And if you do try it out, please let me know what apps you discover that I might like. Huge thank you to Setup for sponsoring this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.